It's the 27th of October and I'm Tom Glass and welcome to The Roast. Tonight, Bill Shorten gives a speech at the Australian Christian Lobby and filmmakers are seeking the details of people who've downloaded the Dallas Buyers Club. Now, Tom, we... Tom, what if you downloaded the comedy vehicle with Adam Sandler, Drew Barrymore, Blended? Well, you've suffered enough. I guess I'll download something else then. Oh, not Dallas Buyers Club. I don't know. What's the new film with Adam Sandler in it that's good? Ricky Muir, the senator whose favourite novel is the super cheap auto catalogue, has lost his second chief of staff. It's the worst thing to happen to Ricky since he found out he couldn't use this cover on his Senate seat. Sarah Menny, who'd only been in the job for two months, resigned as chief of staff on Friday, which is a shame because we're going to miss her work on Twitter promoting some of Ricky's greatest achievements. Australian beard growing champ praises Ricky Muir's goatee. Sarah Menny declined to comment on why she was stepping down, as distinct from Ricky Muir, who seems to be physically unable to comment. <sighs> the latest resignation means Muir has now lost four staffers after only four months of a six-year Senate term. So if this rate continues, by the time six years is up, I assume his chief of staff will be, I don't know, a tire? Queen Elizabeth, the woman whose picture you carry around in your wallet even though she doesn't love you, has sent her first tweet, continuing her favourite method of communication, tiny movements of her hand. The Queen posted the tweet during an exhibition opening at London's Science Museum, and like all tweets, it was accompanied by an orchestra. Of course, the internet responded to the tweet in typical fashion. The tweet, which was retweeted 36,000 times and favourited 37,000 times, was responded by a curt f off by a user named Wolfgang Dickface. And I believe we have footage of Mr Dickface sending his tweet. F off. Now, this is all well and good, but I won't be following the Queen on Twitter. I suspect she's one of those people who just tweet dog pictures. Oh my god, puppies! And finally, an executive from Google has set a new record by jumping from near the top of the stratosphere. Meanwhile, an executive from Bing has attempted his latest stunt. For the roast, I'm Mark Humphreys. Thank you, Mark. Well, next up tonight, Christianity, the religion where the wine's free but it was fermented in the body of a dead bearded man, had a big weekend in Australia. Because on Saturday, Christians received a visit from a very special man. A man who many have lost faith in in recent years, Bill Shorten. The opposition leader, seen here trying not to fall asleep at the sound of his own voice, spoke at the Australian Christian Lobby's National Conference. And yeah, you know how this goes, it's a conservative audience, leaders just talk about how much they love family and community and everyone who thinks like them. I'm a Christian and a supporter of marriage equality under the law. I, I, oh my God, Bill Shorten did something progressive. What do we do in this situation? Is there an alarm or something? No, wait, the dancers! Yes, it's finally time to bring out the Bill Shorten Did Something Dancers! Woo! <laughs> Take it away! Hey, hey, let's, let's do this. Oh, you couldn't get any younger oh, dancers or what? What? I was 20 when they hired me for this gig, young man. It could be worse. We could have been the Abbot sent help for Ebola dancers. <laughs> yeah, well, no story about same-sex marriage would be complete without Liberal Senator Cory Bernardi, who knows all about the dangers of same-sex marriage because he had a bad dream about it once. Pretty sure no one takes lectures on morality and marriage by Bill Shorten seriously. Yeah, he's right actually. We leave the serious discussions about the morality of same-sex marriage to people like Mr Bernardi. There are even some creepy people out there who say that, you know, it's okay to have uh, consensual sexual relations between um, uh, humans and, and animals. Uh, and, you know, is that, will that be a future step? Nope. So now that Bill Shorten has some newfound confidence, what bold new policy directions can we expect Labor to take? Labor may keep the practice of turning asylum boats around if it wins office at the next election. <laughs> Which means it's time to bring out the Labor turning back the boat dancers. 
Just as soon as Labor gets back into government, I'll, um, I'll wait. Huh? Oh, Labor's back in government, which means it's time for the Labor Turn Back the Boat dancers. Turn back the boats! Yes, well, it has been 30 years, so let's honour the memory of those old lady dancers by living how they lived, sitting around, waiting for Labor to do something. We'll be right back. Have you ever spent 30 years of your life waiting for your chance to perform one specific dance? That's a weird job! But it still beats being partnered with Mark Holden on Dancing with the Stars. We'd love to hear about it at the Roast TV or hashtag Roast TV. Finally tonight, the movie studio behind the Oscar-winning film Dallas Buyers Club is trying to punish Australians who downloaded the film illegally. Of course, I'd recommend getting the movie the old-fashioned way on a pirated DVD. So how will the studio punish illegal downloaders? After obtaining the identities of customers via subpoena, it sends them a letter or bill for damages way above the market price for a legal download. Even if only a small percentage agree to pay, at $3,000 or $5,000, it's quite profitable. Yeah, if you thought it was expensive to go to the cinema, it totally is. This is slightly more so. But service providers like iInet have announced they plan to fight back against the requests for information. So it looks like the Dallas Lawyers Club is going to have to push a little harder against companies like Internode or Dodo. I'm going to ask you again, who downloaded the Dallas Buyers Club? <laughs> Dodo internet that flies. You'll be lucky if you can walk after this. The names! Give me the names! <laughs> Dodo, a slow extinct bird narrowly beating out woolly mammoth for the top spot of what to name an internet service. And look, sure, we could blame this whole pirating behaviour on the movie itself, one that portrays someone who was desperate for something and who sought out a way of obtaining it via illegal measures being lauded as a hero. But I think the important thing to remember is, you don't have AIDS, try to be patient, you can wait for a movie. Good night. That said, if a bunch of people who don't own the film are able to get it to us over the internet, the people who do own it should be able to get it to us even sooner. I mean, get your shit together, studios. You are part of the problem. <laughs>